Where? So, we needed a break from the pigeon game because the pigeon game was getting dumb. And it's like that three and a half hour story, it just slid across my desk without me preparing for it. It was like, holy. So, I've been doing a lot of this off screen and do maternal to play something with a little more gameplay to it. Obviously, visual novels aren't exactly gameplay heavy. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see I was there was a black Ducati monster there because I was doing some stuff off screen. Now I was like, really? I don't feel like recording all of this. Uh, it was like a champ this championship monster six nine six. Uh, so yeah, there isn't much left to do. Uh, obviously there's a lot of points because they keep coming third. The cool smart 1000. 998R. Some of these I was doing off screen. And I was getting them on the first corner. But I'll talk about my horrific realizations on why everything is suddenly piss easy on this game later <laughs> during the gameplay. So I tried something that's new and pretty unique to Asia, I think, recently called a lemongrass soda. And it is potentially the weirdest thing I've ever drank in my entire life. Because it tastes weirdly like lemony meaty, like a herb drink. Like imagine if like uh, you put herbs in a soda. Yeah. I bought them thinking, oh, because it's a company called Watson that makes a load of mixer drinks here. Like ginger ale, club soda, that kind of thing. I thought, oh, well, this will be an interesting new mixer for my... Uh, tequila drinks, but I'll try one without any alcohol in it. Oh, it's Walker again. Oh, this is the one that fucked the thing last time. It's fine, we can... It works this time. I will not make any distasteful for Walker. So yeah, while we're here, I was like, oh, I'll just look in the options to see what's going on. And then AI difficulty very easy came up. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I didn't know this either. There's um, all this. Like, a lot of it just got turned on without me knowing. Traction control got turned off at some point. When I thought I had it on max earlier. Oh, no, that was something else. Yeah. The game just decided to change my physics and the difficulty mode without asking. And it's been on very easy because it felt sorry for me because I was doing so fucking shit to start with. And I was like... I'm really getting better at this. And see, I, I passed him on the first corner because he was on really easy. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm getting really good at this game. I'm not falling off anymore. And I'm just beating everything really easily. Shame there's no, like, difficulty level. Because, I mean, this isn't challenging to anyone who's driven a motorbike racing game before. If I can just do it after getting my eye in a little bit. And then I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> it's put it on babby mode for poo babbies. So now I'm kind of sad. I don't know how long it's been on very easy either, because it just tutorializes you and says, fuck you, that's your, that's your difficulty. Let's try and go all the way out. Let's back out. Options. Trolls, HUD, audio, auto sync. That's auto sync.
this camera light. Yeah, look, it's just got controls hard. It doesn't let you change. The difficulty, I don't think. I tried my rider before and it just loads up a load of shit. So it just like it lets you play a tutorial. Then it says, You're dumb. You're on very easy now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Hurtful? <laughs> Jeez. Wait, what was that? That was 2K, right? Let's do it like that was really easy. There's another head to head where I do the same but with a 999R, but let's just do one race for single race. Uh, I'm still getting sick sometimes. Let's see. Head to head. As you can see, the head to heads are pretty much nothing. That's why I've been doing them off screen because I can't seem to change the AI. Ah, uh, control. I will have a look again in a minute. So I'm gonna not, not gonna lie. I want to do a single race on this, and then I want to try the stuff I haven't touched yet because I've left it. I left the top champio for um, LPing sake because I haven't touched any of those bikes yet, and a lot of these I've touched off screen or I've touched in the game touching bikes sounds like a crime sounds like I should be on a register for that so anyway I'm going to drink my lemongrass drink and contemplate why I'm so shit of a motorcyclist oh it tastes weird it tastes like the lemongrass soda tastes like fizzy soup. It tastes like the broth that you put fur in. Race options. At higher levels, they give you good run. <laughs> <It's not laughs> so it's very easy. Easy, medium, hard, realistic. Are we ready for the challenge of the easy? So, in Forza, this stuff changes everything. Like, you know, you get more money, you get more points, but because they only give you points based off of whether or not you win or not in this, it's a bit like bike settings. So you can you can get all nerdy here if you want and do the change of gear ratios and shit. But like let's not do that. <laughs> let's see if I can compete with the dizzying heights of easy. <laughs> Still a load of assists on. So here's a TCS off. Remind me, TCS is traction control, yeah? Before I had it on full and was like, this is helping me, and then I was losing more. I'm wondering if it's like a setting that makes them like stronger, <laughs> like, you know, and then yeah, it goes, oh, he's got traction, he has TCS on full. Now I will murder him and everyone he loves. It will turn into Schwarzenegger. In T2, just all start riding with shotguns and like, Ha ha, hasta la vista, baby. Speaking of uh, action movies from that kind of era, uh, I watched Aliens recently for the first time in ages because I'm pretty sure I've had it on in the background about eight or nine times in my life and I've just gone, da 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 da, and I've kept looking at my phone, not paying attention because I'm an idiot. And uh, this time I actually watched it, and it's been a good few years since I watched it anyway. And I was like, boy, is it me or is Aliens just like, in terms of visual effects, character building, and like nostalgia, like as in a lot of the lines, a lot of the memes 
the lines are iconic lines, the iconic memes shit that uh, people remember Alien franchise for. Like, get away from her, you bitch, the power loader, all of that stuff. New, although, ugh, child actor. Uh, all of that shit is Aliens. In Alien, there's hardly any lines where you're like, oh yeah, every meal a banquet. They're coming out of the walls, man, and all that stuff. It's all in Aliens. It's kind of like Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. While the first film isn't bad, and is actually like a tighter, more specific horror experience, the next one is like the more cheesy, look at all of these quotable lines, set pieces kind of thing, you know? Where everyone remembers it more and go, oh yeah, that's the guy from The Thing. Which is weird, because it's the sequel. But then you look at Terminator, and Terminator 2 as well. Terminator itself is a pretty, like, open and shut thing. It has some obvious lines in it. But, like, I'm still winning. I can handle easy. Not if I hit that wall. I can't handle anything if I hit that wall. Yeah, and then Terminator 2's got a lot of the stuff people remember the Terminator series for. And then, like most of these franchises, it goes downhill once it hits the third one. Although, Army of Darkness for Evil Dead wasn't too bad. I think of the awkward third film in all of those trilogies that I just mentioned, it's one of the films that, like, fared the best, because no one's sitting here thinking, oh, Alien 3, best Alien. Or, um, oh, uh, Terminator 3, best Terminator. <laughs> But, you know, Army of Darkness, people are like, yes, that's still got some good lines. This is my boomstick and all of that. Comes from there. Does some really interesting stuff with the plot where you're like, I did not see that coming. And then you're like, oh, yeah, no, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. This bike is fun to drive. I was looking up the prices of the Ducati Monster after driving it on this game and was like, oh great, I'm never going to be able to afford that. Awesome. But I'm more likely to be able to afford that than virtually any other bike in this. But like, I, I, I wouldn't buy a showroom brand new anyway because I'd just crash it and then cry. But, uh,. Uh, but yeah, um, the 797 in my kind of locale where I would actually buy the bike. I wouldn't buy it here, I'd buy it when I moved, which I hope to do so soonish. Uh, was about 11 to 14,000 pounds equivalent. So I was like, well, that's out of my price range right now. Kind of depressing. Makes me sad. Then I looked at the price of everything else that UK sells, and I'm like, wow. I've never been able to afford that, what the hell. <laughs> it's the price of the fucking SUV. In some of the countries, the price of the Ducati that I was looking at, like the Panigales and the, uh, the Diablos, Diablos, whatever, um, that's actually more than the cost of the, a house to buy brand new, no mortgage in some of those countries. Because, like, the way, like, a lot of the countries in the east and southeast are communist. So, buying property isn't expensive because you're technically renting it from the state for your lifespan, you know? So, it's kind of like Britain, but like more cheap. Where you're technically in Britain, you're technically renting the property off of the Queen for a 99.99 year like lease each time, and then you just say, "Oh, I'm still living there," and they go, "Oh, okay." The Queen says you can still have it. It's like a weird, like technically speaking, nobody owns property kind of thing. It's the same in Vietnam, uh, but like it's actually cheap to buy houses, unlike Britain, Vietnam, where it's like about $20,000 to $30,000 equivalent to buy an apartment 
and it be yours for the length of time I just outlined. So you're like, and for like thirty thousand, thirty five thousand dollars, you can buy a Ducati Panigale B4S or something along those lines, and you're just like, well, I know which one's a little more substantial and important. <laughs> like you know, even I know that. No, it's not the Ducati. I'm sorry. I do want to live somewhere. I mean, you think about it, though. That means you need about 60000 and you've got a house and a bike in a country like that. A house and a really nice bike. What else could you need? Maybe a PC rig? I don't know. <laughs> Simple life. A lot of people always say as well, in a lot of places, including China actually, it's quite expensive for this. Raising children costs nearly a quarter of a million pounds, and it's about equivalent in China even. It's very expensive for all the baby stuff, and all of the game and through school and stuff. The education is really expensive. And you sat there like, who's the fool now? For a way lower price, I can have infinite fun. Yeah. <laughs> Bachelor life for me. <laughs> now you're thinking with portals. Ah, oh, it's kind of depressing. But it's like, to be honest, when you work with kids all of the time, you're not like, oh, the be all and end all is having children. You start to realize, wow. Children are like the worst, and you sacrifice everything for them, and they don't even have the wherewithal to understand, so they're obviously ungrateful because they're unaware. And you're like, oh, being a father would be horrible. No one takes you seriously. Oh, God, this is so weird. It's like drinking a pasty. It's like drinking ham. So weird. Because I often pair lemongrass with like pork and fish and things. So I'm sitting here like, and like it's a key ingredient on in a lot of Vietnamese dishes, which I do like a lot. And it kind of is like drinking fizzy broth. I know I keep saying it. Speaking of like better food and drink options. Uh, there's this great New Zealand chocolate company and a great few Belgian chocolate companies that I often get on from import com uh, import places here. Occasionally buy myself a nice chocolate. There's a New Zealand Artisans connect Collection by a company called Whitakers, hashtag not spawn, and they do some fucking amazing chocolate because a lot of New Zealand products are actually ridiculously high quality. And really good. I've never regretted buying New Zealand stuff. Please let me have a visa, New Zealand. Okay, uh... It won't... Oh god, there's so many tracks. I was gonna say, let's do a championship, and then I was like, oh, the one championship is, like, gonna be an hour and a half in length, and I don't want to cut this. Because we've done, what, like, a shitty head-to-head? -head. <laughs> that was, like, a minute. And then we did one single race, so we're going to have to do some of these, I think. Then we did the Magni cores, but we did like the first corner of the Magni cores, so let's just do it properly this time. Raymond Roche or Carl Fogarty? Hmm. Let's, let's do this one, because it... Oh. Or this one. Oh, we'll take the shell bike and club some seals on our way around. <laughs> petrol company equals evil. Doesn't stop me driving petrol fueled vehicles. This is why the planet's dying. There's only one rider. Oh, yeah, okay. The king. Was it Elvis? That's a lot of horsepowers. I have to admit. Yeah, just stick it on easy still, because I'm a huge baby. 
Oh, those textures, man. They ain't looking great. They need to make another one of this. This is the most recent Ducati game there has been. This is very fast. <laughs> I just jumped like three things, didn't I? I went from modern the, the 2K era to this insanity speed bike. And yeah, this is a 1999 bike, but this is also a racetrack bike. Why isn't this a road legal? Can I have one? Yeah, honestly, talking about bikes, uh, I really want to start off super cheap anyway, so that I can like kind of fuck around with the bike. You know what I mean? You just start kind of like customizing it, fixing shit on it, and like getting my idea of like styles of bike riding position and stuff, and then I'm not gonna be like committing to something where it's like oh yeah i just spent all my money on this super sport and i hate riding it because i just found out recently that i don't like riding in the super sport position you know really high up or whatever like beamed over the fuel tank or whatever i want something a little more lower to the ground or like that's what put me off buying any like cruisers um you know because a lot of cruisers are really expensive and dominate a fairly high kind of cost band unless you get one that's like a low level like Suzuki or something. Ooh, he came off there. So I was thinking, oh well, you know, that's the best way to find out if I even like sitting in that position whilst riding, because I've only ridden like Honda CBs and like a Royal Enfield and a few other things, you know, like Stuff that's kind of like a kind of Bonneville style position or like kind of average like bikes position, you know. So I consider the CB a fairly standard kind of like sit because it's like the first bike I ever rode. Um, and then a bunch of mopeds, moped kind of style scooter kind of uh, position, which obviously like you can just get on those wearing sandals and be able to just drive it whilst looking at your phone and also. Or drinking a Starbucks, so like, don't have to do anything. I, I drive it around one handed. <laughs> like, doesn't matter. With my, no helmet on. It's like, you can only do like 30 kilometers an hour to 50 kilometers an hour, and I'm rarely getting it up to 50 kilometers an hour because it needs like a tailwind. <laughs> so it's like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I mean, if I came off at 50 with nothing nothing protective on, I'd probably still fucking cut myself up a bit. It's just, uh, I'm just assuming that that won't happen, which is a pretty fucking unsafe thing to say. But, yeah, no, wear protective gear, everyone. It's just I'm an asshole. Hey, man, it's hot outside. So, yeah, like, you know, before investing in a very expensive thing like a Harley Davidson or a Ducati Super Sport or something like that, um, I really want to just try the more low level, low CC stuff, fiddle around with it, maybe turn something into a Cafe Racer or a Brat Bike and start customizing it, fucking around with it, and trying out some other stuff when I get bored, you know, experimenting before committing to a ridiculously high power, super expensive Italian mega beast bike, then going, oh man, I hate it. <laughs> I'm scared. Every time I turn the thing, it tries to flip me off and I'm terrified, you know. The reason they tear them a little bit and say, yeah, don't just get on this. I was having a joke with my mate recently. I was like, hey, the Ducati Diavo, pretty good starter bike, right? It's only 12,600, no, 12,600, <laughs> 1,260, I mean, uh, if it was that much, yeah, it's, it's not a bike for anyone, it'll kill everyone. Ooh, ooh, oh, he just to put his foot down. I nearly killed him. Yeah. Maybe not, regardless of the real CC, probably not the best option. Oh, you're on invalid time. Fuck you. I'm trying to catch Suto over here. 
and talk about my ineptitude. It's very hard. I'm like balancing all of my incompetency at once. Uh no, come back. No bueno. Plus. Go be plus. Yeah. I can get around this corner. Shut up. <laughs> Good job I have like fucking Oh, oh no, it's, this is not a good job at all. Oh, and the wheel's just coming off all the time. Oh, no. He's, he's still happy. Let's listen to this weird-ass fucking music. Da, 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 da. Close wait. Oh, I'm never gonna get used to that. I can't even explain the flavor well. It's really frustrating me. It reminds me of something though. Like a <laughs> taste. Uh one time. I was thinking about this today, and I have forgotten about it for a long time. But I was thinking about this recently, because I've been getting a bit of asthma recently, because the pollution's starting to creep back here, because everyone's going back to work, and you know what they get like over here. Mmm, time to destroy the environment and blame everybody but us. Mmm, who needs an environment anyway? China says the environment is for them to kill. That's why it's kind of depressing when people are like, we must save the planet. Because it's like, you're going to have a long, complicated talk with the Chinese. Because they've been told like by everybody for years. Like, I'm pretty sure Obama literally turned around and said, we will not trade with you unless you sort out. And they were like, yeah, 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 we'll sort it out. No more coal-fired power stations by this day. So they went, quick, build all the coal-fired power stations before this day. And there's like hundreds of bloody things over here. And it stinks. And it's like unsafe to breathe air. <laughs> like, and yeah, anyway. Oh, it's a time trial. I should read. I'm bad at these. Yeah, this is what hinted me that the game was lying to me about the AI's difficulty because they don't change the times you have to beat when it changes the AI difficulty. It literally only changes the AI. So when I was getting really shit times and couldn't get round even to bronze on some of these tracks in the early modes, I was like, huh, how am I beating the races then? That's what got me looking for the options. Anyway, yeah, like, the pollution here is, like, atrocious. It's the worst it could basically be, aside from, like, Mongolia. And I think it's pretty much comparable to New Delhi. Pretty much all the time. And every time you talk to a Chinese person, they're like, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as Beijing. And you're like, yeah. That's because I'm pretty sure at this point, hell itself has better breathing fucking air than Beijing. Beijing is so dangerous, you might as well just give up and shoot yourself in the face. <laughs> like, people say it's, the equa it's equated to about 20 cigarettes a day, just breathing air in Beijing. It's so bad in China that two out of three people die from lung cancer or diseases caused by the pollution or by tainted water supplies. But they're like, no, 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 it's old age, man. Because they don't want their people to go, oh, you're fucking the environment. Maybe you can do that. Not that that would change anything. Just get shot. Um, <clears throat> anyway, getting around to the Oh, I've just ruined this bit entirely. <laughs> the other day, I was thinking, oh, I killed him. What happens when you bad enough guy? You get knocked off your bike. Uh, yeah, so I was like, the other day, I was like, well, that was a while ago now. 
I was walking down the street with an American guy and this Chinese girl who had really good English and had lived in America for a long time. And uh, we were chatting and she, I was like, oh, God, I feel so bad. And like, you, like it was like misty. Ooh. <laughs> it was misty outside. And I was like, you know, like it's not mist, it's smog. And uh, she's like, yeah, it ain't that bad in China. The pollution's not that bad. It's almost the same as America. And I was like, literally looking at the American guy. I just turned to her and was like, you can literally see the poison gas. And she was just like, oh, yeah, and we just both doubled up laughing. Because it's like, you can literally see the poisonous gas floating in the air like a... Like, like a sea, an army of coughings and wheezings, and like the Chinese will literally ignore the evidence that their eyes are given and go, "Ah, that's just bad weather, man. Nothing we could do about that." And it's literally spewing out of the plastics factories that are nearby to that area and stinking the place out of burning plastic. And you're like, "Uh huh." natural phenomenon called plastic factory but off fumes yeah because mm. they don't have any fucking uh, they don't abide any fucking environment law over here <laughs> like you know they just do shit until everyone drops dead of cancer and then go oh um everyone have more children <laughs> it's like it's like they've just entered the industrial revolution it's terrifying have you seen my times? My times are terrible. This is what I'm on about. Let's just shut up. Let's see if I can get this. I've already fucked it, but we'll, 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 get... we'll try and get bronze. It's really hard when you, like, I can't get around any corner without talking about pollution or something. Lemongrass. I'm a big, big racer boy. I'm a big bleaky man. I can dib it. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, uh, it's a better split time. But I think I'm going to need more than like two thirds of a second. Oh, I overshot Farlba! It's fine, it didn't invalidate the time, but it would have been better if I stayed on the fucking track. Oh, balls. Oh, penalty timer, and I had a whole second. Ah, oh, I had a whole second split time. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Get your ass around the corner. Come on. Yeah. Oh no! Fuck! Why was this straight so long? No, no. <laughs> yes. Nice bike. I'm just bad at life. It's very hard to do anecdotes and drive. <laughs> Please let me go. There we go. It's a savory drink. A savory soda. Yeah, I'm still talking about the lemongrass soda. I don't. So yeah, I'm doing this because I was kind of like, need a break from the pigeon game. As you can see on my channel lately, it's been like pigeon game, pigeon game, pigeon game. And I'm just like, I need something else. So uh, R1, R2, it's all bueno to me. Let's go to Sugo. We, we just drove that with Troy Bayless. Uh, we, tried, we drove that one. We haven't driven this one. We haven't driven this one. Let's, oh, let's see. 
Uh, oh yeah, let's just do R1. I don't know. I want to drive the Neil Hodgson. I feel like I worked with someone called Neil Hodgson once at the airport, but it might be Neil Hodges or something. It's really ringing a bell. <laughs> yeah, I work security on night shifts at Bristol Airport. <laughs> With the legendary fucking Ducati driver. <laughs> well, that would have been weird, wouldn't it? Yeah, I used to drive like, uh, uh, like you know, <laughs> motorcycles really fast on tracks for this. But then I decided that I'm just going to settle for airport security. But, you know... I miss airport security because I have this kind of filter, which is like, I know airport security. You're basically afforded a lot of respect because people are terrified that you'll take away the right for them to uh, fly because you can. And you can also call the police if they're doing something illegal and get them like arrested and shit. So people are like terrified of upsetting you. And, like, as a teacher, nobody is terrified of upsetting you. So it's just, like, it comes with the territory. And I kind of miss that kind of generic intimidation aura where it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to have to go talk to Agent Tough, which is my surname. And everyone's just like, <laughs> and they see this kind of, like, average sized white guy with a beard and tattoos. And I'm like, yep, this is Agent Tough. <laughs> shit in themselves and like if i'm like i'm a pretty chill guy actually like i'm everyone knows that i'm a pretty chill guy and i don't hurt anybody but i can put the edge on when i need to and i used to put the edge on a lot for that job when people were annoying me and i hadn't slept for six hours and it was only two in the morning um because <clears throat> when they're giving me shit for stuff i'm like fine you you want to do it this way and i'd be getting really shitty with people people would be like Right, let's just let this, like, you know, if he's getting shitty, just, like, you know, maybe don't be a dick, and they would, like, back off and stuff, and, like, in teaching, you can be going stark raving mad at kids, and then two seconds later, they're back being a dickhead. Like, stop playing with that fucking toy, <laughs> and you could literally be swinging your arms around, screaming blue murder at them, like, I will end this lesson and call your parents i will literally like walk out of this class and get the principal i am so mad and then like they're like oh shoot and then within five seconds they're like <laughs> and you're just like for fuck's sake like, what's wrong with children imminent danger has gone away i will immediately re-engage in annoying behavior it's like whereas with adults they go oh shit if I do something that makes me a dickhead, he'll get angry. Maybe stop being a dickhead because I value my, my face, <laughs> like, you know, and my flight. When it came to, like, kids, man, they're just like, <laughs> and, like, some of them, oh, my God, there's some spoil-ass kids. I don't like ragging on the spoil-ass kids, but there's some spoil-ass kids. Some real nice kids as well, and you're like, I, I, I got some real, like, got some real, like, stuff you pull out for the interviews. Uh, although that kind of ruins it. Um, <clears throat> kind of, like, heartwarming shit that brings tears to everyone's eyes where it's like, there was this, uh, so I was working in uh, Hong Kong, and it's a predominantly Cantonese environment in Hong Kong, as you can imagine, in their school. And uh, there was one Pakistani kid who was having trouble at school because he's like, you know, because he's like, uh, comes from a family, incidentally, this kid came from a family of like seven kids, like there was loads of them, they all came to school to pick him up. And he didn't get enough time to just do his stuff, you know, like he had a lot of stuff to do and uh, he didn't have enough time to do his homework. And uh, as a result, his like writing skill was actually quite low for his age and he was get very stressed and very upset and would like start getting like crying and like because the teachers would just abandon him because he was Pakistani they just be like 
And then every time he called out Tony Blair, they'd be like, that's enough. And like proper really nasty to him. And I was like, they, used, they also treated me like shit as well because I was white. And I sat there like, like, no one spoke to me the whole time at this kindergarten that I was working at. And he didn't either. No one spoke to him either. Like some of the kids did, but all of their parents were like, Pfft sniffy about them hanging out with him outside of school so he was really lonely he only had his family and he was upset and pressured a lot to make everything work and the parents the teachers would just shout at him whenever he didn't do stuff so hurry up what the hell are you doing that wouldn't help him and then like it got to the point where like i was just sat extending the class for him and it went into my lunch hour because it was just before lunch and I would just sit with him throughout my lunch hour and do writing classes with him and just him. And no one asked me to because they wouldn't ask me to because they're like, oh, it's that Pakistani kid. And then I, we'd have to talk to the white guy as well. So I just did it naturally because so I could see he was like struggling. And eventually one of the teachers found out and started shouting at the kid and going like, yeah, like, oh, uh, yeah, like kind of thing. Oh, you, sh- you should be like, you're wasting this teacher's time, you know. He's got a lunch hour, you know. And I was like, being a real cunt about it, and was like, you're, you should apologize and thank this teacher. And I just looked at this Cantonese teacher who was being a shit to him and said, he doesn't need to apologize. I'm helping. And she backed off. And every time I tell that story now to a group of teachers, you can see the girls, like, they're like, 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 there's tears in their eyes, and there's guys going, oh, man, and I'm like, yeah, and I bring that up in every fucking interview, because I know it's gold, because it shows that I give a shit, <laughs> you know? But, like, I didn't do it because of that. I did it because I could see the kid really gave a shit, and a lot of the local kids, a lot more, he was local, a lot of the Cantonese kids didn't care. They were, like, really wealthy, and were just like, nah, 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 and they were, like, dicking around throwing shit in the class and we're just like, I don't need to care. My daddy's a IT guy or something expensive. I don't know. <laughs> they like, they were, um, there were some really, uh, great kids that you teach that you can see it means a lot to them. And then there's some real ass hat kids who you're like, they've been given everything their entire life. Let's drive the murder bike. This is R2, but it's got the stats are all way bigger. I don't get it. Number number division R2, but speed go up. Is R2 bigger than R1? I don't know. Let's find out. Because it says Desmo Sedici, I'm sitting here thinking... Uh oh. Because <laughs> every time I saw the Desmo Sedici on the other bikes, it meant it thirsts for blood. Let's go. I want this bike in my garage so that I can have no true fear. That's the sound of death. That's that's an ungodly noise. It's it's very nimble. It's just going around the corners like it's like possessed. What is this bike? Fucking ah! Ah! <laughs> oh no 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 no! Oh yeah, I felt that coming. Oh, what I got coming. No, no, it doesn't like that corner. It says no. It says no boy. <laughs> I just sleep. I sleep in the... 
you know when you get something and you're just like this is just it's just too fast and I'm too stupid. Like fucking everywhere, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> like This is what I mean about it doesn't matter if I can't afford a Ducati straight away because this is what it would be like for me getting on a standard kind of normal range of CC Ducati from day one where I'd just be scared of it the whole time. And as a result, be driving it like a big chicken like this around every corner like, Hey, I don't want to die. Oh, man. Yeah, I did a lot of Doom Eternal recently, and I gotta say, can't wait for the DLC because I'm actually like I love the game loop. I love the gameplay books. I've played those levels so many times on various difficulty levels, and I've just got to this point where I'm like, "Yep, I need something else to do in this game." I tried extra life mode. I've tried famine mode with the you know, famine mode cheat activated. I've done all of that stuff, but I don't really want to play online, so I haven't even bothered to try. I might try the tutorial and see if I can do it with some bots or something just to play around with demon trolls and stuff. It's like... <sighs> I got all of the gun mods fully upgraded. You know, I got a bunch of skins, and I'm just like... It's just... <laughs> There's just nothing else now. You know? There's just nothing else until they give me new stuff to do that's exciting and different. It really needs, like, a bloody palace. Which is a weird thing to think. Doom needs a bloody palace mode. But Doom really does. So I can just sit here and slay demons. So, you know, if they had that kind of stuff where there was levels and, you know, I would be so happy. And DMC5 needs Virgil, but, and Lady and Trish, but it's, I think it's coming. I think a special edition will come for PS5 at this rate. Ah, my eye. Oh, I had to itch my eye, and then I fell on the grass. Ooh. Yeah, it's a great game though. I almost tempted to try it on Nightmare and try and go through it on Nightmare or Ultra Nightmare, but I know I won't get very far, so I was just kind of like, what's the point? <laughs> like, you know, I, I know that I'm not going to like, I've played it a lot and I've got to the point where Ultra Violence is just manageable, but I'm looking at Nightmare and I've always looked at Nightmare on Doom as like, this is just. Madness. I can't handle it, you know? Final lap hype. Let's go from zero to one. That's totally going to happen. Which we overtook the first corner. Uh, yeah. Great game. Some of those guns, after mastering the mods, you're like, I slept on this mod, and some of these mods, you're like, God, this is a pointless mod. Like, it fulfills a utility, but it's a utility I don't want. Like, it's a utility I, it's, it feels pointless to me, or just doesn't fit my playstyle particularly well, because I'm all about running around like a madman, like driving, uh, driving, uh, moving around, dashing all the time. So some of those mods, they slow you right down, and you're like, it's not even got a good explosion or anything. Like, 
Destroyer Blade is great because it slows you down, but it's like a great payoff. But like the energy shield for the Gatling gun is just like I understand why this is here and I used it a few times and then like it's like fully upgraded version. If it you do enough damage with the gun while it's out, it will move forwards like um, an Aegis reflector, which is pretty cool. It's just it keeps you still. Oh, I oh I did that too early. There we go. Somehow save that. And it's like, this would be cool, but I'm being locked down to quite a slow walking speed when I'm using it. And honestly, I just don't like it as much as the, uh, the turrets, you know? Anything, any mod that's not the portable turret mod on the chain gun in Doom is always going to have a big problem trying to stay up uncompetitive in comparison to it, you know? That was terrible. Damn it. <laughs> and yeah, some of those gun mods, they're actually like more interesting for me. When I first went through Doom 2016, I never used the stun bomb mod for this, uh, the plasma rifle because it just sounded boring. Then I went through it recently again, 2016, with the stun bomb mod. I was like, okay, actually it's got some great usage. But um, especially working with those shield fuckers on that game you really need it for that and just to give yourself some breathing space but like um to be honest the heat blast on that gun in that game wasn't very good either but like they managed to change both of them for this and instead of the stun bomb the microwave beam is actually pretty interesting that i didn't give it the time of day before and so r2 i'm scared of r2 now uh, these are all time attacks. If you're just going to do something a little less, a little less madness. What we got left? S and a golly time attack. Should do bad on. Uh, not much. Okay. There it is. We'll do this head to head. It's on easy now, not very easy. So maybe I won't take him on the first corner. This is a cool bike. Hmm. Interesting. Uh. I want to do catty monster, but I'm a poor boy. You're taking on Lopez, was that? Jennifer Lopez? Oh, there's other dudes on the track. Ah, balls. Ugh. Where is this Lopez? Ah, out the way. I didn't see him. Oh, there. I see him on the mini map. That guy. The guy that's actually overtaking other people. I can get him. I can get him. I can take him. I can take him. I can take him. I can't take him. I'm fucking around. Uh, 
I see him. Ah, uh, came back on the. Mm. Oh, let's feel this. This speed. This tension. Never felt anything like this. Damn, dude. Just being anime for lols. Yes, three seconds. Oh. <laughs> I passed him to my death. <laughs> I win. I can beat the AI on easy. Yeah. I just wanted to drive the Jukai. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll do one more of this, and then we'll change to Akami's, or maybe Devil May Cry. I don't know. I got so much to say about the Devil May Cry anime, I wrote a whole thing down so I could talk about that, and I haven't done a Devil May Cry LP for a while. I was thinking of doing the full fucking campaign. But, uh... See what else we got. Track it. This is just overtaking dudes. That'd be a nice one to finish on, wouldn't it? So let's finish on it. A for eight. Let's have it in white. I'm sick of seeing red. <laughs> At this point, I'll take anything else. Uh. So yeah, thinking of something else that's kind of dumb. What else have I been doing? Been reading a lot on the Buddhist scriptures recently, cause yeah, <laughs> I got a book when I was in Nepal. They had a Buddhist bookshop because there's loads of those in Kathmandu, where I was staying on holiday. About this time last year, geez, that was a long time ago. And uh, it was it was a whole, like, I read loads of, I bought a load of literature, and I've just been reading it. And uh, now I'm reading the entire Buddhist scriptures, or not the entire, because there's too many. A collection of some of the more, more uh, popular, important, or, like, rare... Oh yeah, I got overtaken. Goes on. Uh, stuff, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's pretty interesting." Ah. So I find that stuff interesting, and I'm still reading about Freud. And I finally got to the bit in his the book I'm reading about his concept of dream interpretation. And if you've never read Freud's interest in dream interpretation. <laughs> You should really read that. It's really interesting. Even if it has no merit, it's the foundation of an entire... Yes. It's the foundation of an entire art movement. Surrealism has pretty much got its foundation in Freud's work. And it's very interesting. And you should read it. Because it's cool. And I said so. So shut up. That's why surrealism seems like quite dreamlike, because they take the idea of dreamscapes and things that don't make sense and be illogical and try and formulate. And a lot of people don't realize surrealism was a manifesto that was designed essentially to say logic brought us to World War One. That's what logic brought us to. Logic and reason gives us this nightmarish hell. 
So therefore, we should stop using a logic, stop applying it as often, and focus on the more whimsical and the and the more artistic and the more like uh, <clears throat> the more passionate sides of life, the creative, and you know, not just be completely like the monster reading Looney Party, but like start to apply a sense of like artistic and it's quite an interesting movement uh, a lot of the artists then went into hiding and hid in America including Dali and Breton uh, during World War II and then basically by the end of World War II they were uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot of them were <clears throat> returning to stuff but uh, returning to Europe but, like, it kind of fizzled out after that because, you know, no one was really paying attention to it, so. I think the problem is people just saw it as an art movement and didn't see it as, like, a, hey, guys, we should just be like this all of the time. Just fuck it. <laughs> Which is quite funny because it's, it's also had a lot of prescriptors to Dadaism. But, um... Yeah, like Magritte and a lot of those guys still embodied it for a long time. And uh, it was very fashionable. And then you think about now modern era, a lot of people are now subs kind of subscribing to the same kind of ideas because of the, how fucked up the world is. I got second. And uh, going more into this kind of illogical kind of mentality again as well. So I think it's kind of interesting. It may make a revival soon. Purely because of the true horror that the logic and reasoning of capitalism has brought us, and how science has not saved us at all, people will start to go down a more surrealist route again. Because it tends to be that we, as humans, withdraw into a kind of artistic panic room kind of state when shit goes wrong during bad times of like economic and social depression. We tend to withdraw into this kind of very weird um oh la 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 i don't want to like you know head in the sand kind of thing but also we kind of withdraw into this well if this is all this has to offer i refuse and i reject this and we just move away into our own kind of dream world <laughs> instead i want to do another track day Will you join me on this journey? I don't care if you don't. <laughs> I know my view count shit. I don't care. <laughs> Dude, I just do this because I'm bored. Oh, man. I will tell another story while we load. So recently, I changed jobs. And then the new job started acting real fucking shitty. <laughs> like, bad communication, mostly. And I was just like, between, it's a husband and wife thing. And the husband's like a white English guy, and the wife's a Chinese lady. They have kids, they, they're like professional couple and everything. And uh, they do not communicate shit about dick to each other. So whenever I, it's like, to, you know, it's, it was like talking to your mum or your dad and they're like, ask your dad. So I go ask like the, the, the British dude who was overworked and stressed and he'd just be like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you can have that. And I'd be like, cool, really? But it was like contractual negotiation. <laughs> so I was sitting there saying, hey, uh, I don't know if I want to sign a two-year contract because I, I want to leave China relatively soon after the borders to the southeast reopen. So I'm thinking six months. And he was like, yeah, 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 that's fine. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, 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 no, no, it's fine. I was also like, oh, well, this salary is also quite low too. Uh, I'm used to a higher salary. Oh, oh, yeah, and before I could even get the words out and suggest an alternative, he was like, oh, yeah, we'll just put you on, like, another, like, six grand a month more than that. I was like, okay. Well, that was easy. I'm glad I asked. Then within two weeks later, though, like, a week later, 
The lady comes back and says, yeah, no, I, if I knew that you were like not going to take a two year contract seriously, we wouldn't have got past the interview stage. I was like, oh, well, I just said, OK, <laughs> I was like, and I was like, I didn't say six months, actually. I said I wanted it to be shorter than two years because I was looking and preparing to go to the southeast. I don't know how long that'll take because borders, etc. Thailand's suffering particularly badly, so Thailand's off the list for a while. And um, she took this really seriously when it was her husband who made that decision and said, six months. And I was like, okay, six months rolling contract. And I said, your husband said six months rolling contract. Is that okay? And she said, no. <laughs> And if you want to do that, then we can't hire you. And I was like, um, okay, can we renegotiate? What about a year? And she was like, no, two years. And I was like, and before I'd even like been able, like before she'd even had this conversation with me, she told the parents that I was leaving. And I was like, okay, felt like I had no choice in that, but whatever. I just killed that guy. Oh, we're not gonna make silver! Yeah, we made silver! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh no, if they overtake me again. No, 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 no! <laughs> I made silver. <laughs> if they overtake me again, I lose the thing. I haven't finished my story now. I keep leaving everything at a weird thing and I have to do another race. Well, let's just do one more, because overtakes don't take that long. They take like two laps. Or like a lap and a half. That was a lap, I think. My weird ham drink. Uh, yeah, so, um... Yeah, she just texts me one day on one of my days off in the morning saying, yeah, can you just not come into work anymore? And I was like, uh, the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, so I don't have a job now. And they were like, yeah, <laughs> this is really unhelpful. And I was a bit like, thanks for wasting my time, assholes. Um, great. Uh, let's see. And like, well, I wasn't rude because I thought, like, maybe that I said to them, Are you sure? And they were like, Yeah, no, we can't, whatever, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I was like, Okay, this is really inconvenient, but fine, whatever. I not play with the 999 for a while. Just did the 848 and treat the ball. That's the 999. And uh, yeah, she was going on. Yeah, no, and it was just no communication between her and her husband. And I was just sat there like, okay, <clears throat> thinking I'll just let them get on with it, you know? I'll let them get on with it. They'll work out the mistake later. And at the end of the day, if they can't take me for less than two years, I ain't going to stay here two years. So why would they sign a contract knowing that even if I sign a two-year contract, I'm not going to stay. So, um, yeah, we were just sat there. I was just sat there, and I thought, alrighty, sure. They owe me a load of money. Because uh, I work part-time for like two, three months for them, and it's a lot of hours, so it's like about 10 grand worth of hours in their money, which is about a thousand pounds, thousand two hundred pounds. So I'm kind of like, so I'll come pick up my money soon because, you know, fuck <laughs> and I've got to give back the uniform. Uh, and I'm like, sure, buddy, whatever you say. And they're like, you know, just being like, but you do owe me the money. <laughs> and they're like being really good about it. And they're like, Great, good, great, all smiley faces. Yeah, great to see you then again. And I'm thinking, they're going to renegotiate, aren't they? <laughs> there was this communication snafu where the two of them couldn't speak to one another properly about the subject. There was a misunderstanding and they're like, no, we can't have you. 
And I reckon they're going to try and talk me into coming back. <laughs> After all this. What disorganization? And I'm sat there, like, waiting. I'm, I'm now talking to, like, uh, other guys outside of China. Like, multiple different countries and shit. Trying to establish with them. Hey, would you be interested even in hiring a guy who's recently come from China, considering the crisis? And a lot of them are like, dude, we had so many teachers leave during the COVID crisis that are now not coming back to Asia, period. We'll take anything. British, five years experience teaching. Sounds good to me. Do you want to go work in Da Nang? Do you want to go work on the coast? <laughs> you know, Da Nang's on the coast of Vietnam. Um, you know, loads of guys on the coast of Vietnam asking me, and I'm like, I'd like to work by the beach again, because Qing Dao was really nice. Um, and, like, guys in Japan, a couple of guys anyway, but they, Japanese are always a bit more, like, slower on their deliberation process, and, like, I don't think it would be ideal. And Thailand's having problems at the moment, but I'm willing to wait for Thailand if they go, hey, do you want to go work in live in Pattaya or somewhere nice like that by the beach, Krabi or something. And like they're offering similar salaries in countries which are known to actually pay less and have like, you know, less, a lower cost of living in China. Um, or an equatable one. Either way, it's free a country where I'm actually allowed to do things regardless of my skin color, so I don't really give a shit. And I can ride a motorbike without a license, which suits me quite well. Because <laughs> I'm lazy and don't want to do the license. Because the lessons are in, like, a language I don't understand. Gotta, gotta remember that. So it's like, how the hell am I supposed to learn how to drive a bike in, like, Thai or B? Have people hopping up and down, shouting at me the whole time, going, it's like easier if I just say, look, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I know how to drive a bike. So I do. No! Oh, my cat crushed my bike. You crashed. He punched the TV and the guy came off the bike. Oh, and he did it again. <laughs> We'll try that again. Oh no! No! My progress! Oh, they've all gone by me! One mistake and it's all ruined. So, yeah, like, I got a bunch of guys, like, trying to, like, wine and dine me to come and work in their countries now for similar salaries and it's like by the end of the summer a lot of these places said that they're probably going to start reopening borders in the southeast and i'm like dude i i've been bitching about china for the past two years everyone's like so fucking leave everyone i know who i started off with and i'm friends with in china or when i first met them in china have all left and been gone for like a year plus and i'm just like yeah, I should just go. <laughs> Suck. No, no meow. Oh, you made me lose the race. You're telling me off. He tells me off a lot. Ah. Again. No, please. I want to win. I'll talk to you after this one, okay? Been grumpy with me for the past two days because I washed him yesterday morning. Oh, meow. Telling me. 
So yeah, talk about disorganization. These guys have been like, I think they might have realized the situation because if your industry is basically hinged on selling white English speakers or like native English speakers anyway, they're kind of racist over here. So it is actually white people because they're kind of like only whites are native English speakers. It's like, well, you're wrong. And you're super racist for thinking that, but, you know, there ain't any other people like me. Put it this way, walking around with the correct visas still in China right now. Everyone else has gone home. And the, at the moment, it doesn't matter if you have a visa or not. If you're out of China and you're foreign, you can't come in to China unless you're a Chinese citizen. And even they're getting, like this treatment of you've got to fill out free forms and have all these health checks and shit. You can't get into China right now. It's hard. And it's impossible if you're foreign. Their industry relies on foreign teachers, specifically teachers from a set of native countries with a certain complexion because they're so racist towards blacks in this country. And I'm sat there like, I am very interested to see you reject this guy who you will not see again. You won't see a guy like me again, in my predictions, because the Chinese will keep the border closed for a while, I think, until like 2021. And that's realistic, I think, because it's been a while and I can't see them opening anytime soon because there's been no rumors, and rumors circulate when they start to open in China around anything whenever something new is about to happen. And um, there's been nothing, and we're all just sitting here and waiting for it. And it's like, your industry relies, like, I am the selling point. If you were a coffee shop, I'm the coffee. And you just turned away the only coffee you can sell, <laughs> like, you know, for the next year, for the rest of this year anyway. When he said, hey man, I'm just working until I can leave myself. So how about I work for you until the borders reopen? Then I'll stick around for a little while longer so you can get a replacement white guy to do the job probably better than I can. And um, no harm done then. It's fine. And then I'll just like, you know, I'll just bugger off go to Vietnam, I've made money, you've made money, what's the problem? And they went, no, 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 you've got to stay here two years. And I was like, well, I'm not doing that, am I? <laughs> if, if we, like, and I said to him, like, I would be horrified if nothing at all, no other countries reopened their borders for two years. I would be like, I wouldn't, still wouldn't want to stay in China. I would literally consider returning back to my home country. I don't want to do that because I can't do my job over there. I teach English as a foreign language. I can't teach that in England. It's not a foreign language anymore. I'd actually have to get a degree in teaching. <laughs> uh, let's leave it there for today and stop my whining. I'm sure it will leak into the other playthrough I'll do soon after this. But... My cat says, my way. I'm coming. Yeah, let's end up there. My cat's, my cat's browbeating me.